Even though you're not playing, you have to work hard for you, for you and for, for the opportunity you are waiting for. If you want to make your dream come true, you got to have commitment and discipline. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Paul Tully with the FYI Podcast. We got another great guest today. We're talking with Miguel Ponce. Miguel is a soccer player. He's played on huge platforms from Chivas to the Mexico national team. And now he plays here in Ontario for our own Ontario Strikers. Miguel, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? Thank you for the invitation. Man, thank you for coming. It's a big honor to have you here. Uh... Uh, I just learned, actually, talking with you, that you as well are a gold medalist and a World Cup attendee. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. I was a lucky man during my career. Uh, and, yeah, I, I, I had the opportunity to, to go to a World Cup. You know, that's like the most uh, tournament for a soccer player. And, yes, uh, I was a gold medalist as well. Wow, what what is that like? Like, so you played in in the World Cup. Was it in Brazil? Or yeah, that was in Brazil, in Brazil. Uh, 2014. Yeah. Wow. What I mean, what was that feeling like when you first walked into that stadium? I wow. mean, what was happening? Actually, when uh, when you get to know that you're going to the World Cup, man, you get excited, really <laughs> excited, because man, that's one of the moments you want to you want to leave as a player, you know. So I was really happy and. Um, uh, I was uh, actually I didn't have any minutes during the World Cup, mm -hmm. uh, but I was really close to to have a few minutes during the Brazil Mexico game. Oh. And man, that that was uh, man, my heart was beating so 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 hard, and I was so nervous. I was just waiting for the moment, but didn't come. But I, 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 that doesn't matter. I was really happy for being part of the of the World Cup team. When I'm watching. World Cup, Super Bowls, anything. I've I've thought many times, like, oh, I wonder what that feels like for the athlete who might not be in the game, but they're so important in that game. The morale, the the being part of the team, and and how important that is still for you because it's very it's incredible that even if you didn't get minutes, that you're there. I mean, you're a big part of why the team got there, right? Yeah, I, way. I, actually, it's very important. Even though you don't play, uh, you have to be a very good teammate. You have to support your your friends. Because if they win, you win, yeah. you know? So, so you have to be a, a really good person uh, if you don't get to play. So it's really important because you are part of the team. That's why it's a team, you know? Yeah. So, so you have to, like, be very patient and wait for your moment. If, it, if, if you get the, the opportunity, you have, to, you have to get it. You have to go get it. And if you don't, you have to support uh, your, your teammates because that's why uh, you are part of the team. Yeah, if you got put in, you were ready to go. Yeah, uh, cause you have to learn that uh, during the years uh, playing soccer, you know uh, that sometimes you are not going to play, and you have to keep working hard as if you're playing. Mm. You know, as, as if you're inside the the field. And if you don't, man, you have to be like very mature to to accept that and and to and to have another role in 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 the in the team because you have to be uh professional cause, yeah because you still get to they pay you as well if yeah. you don't play you get paid yeah but you have to be prepared for the moment uh you get the opportunity because if you don't if you're not prepared and even if you think you're not gonna play uh when you get the opportunity you're not gonna do it right yeah so even though you're not playing you have to work hard for you yeah for you and for for the opportunity you are waiting for it's so important to have that mentality in life. It's like even if you're not getting paid, being ready, being like you're competing against yourself to be the best you can. So I see that in what you're saying. And that's a good reminder for me is like always be prepared, always be supportive of other people out there. We don't have to live in a world that we're constantly competing or we we need to be the, the number one. It's like. We live in a world where we're competing with ourselves, and we should always be the best we can and, and spread yeah. love and support other people. So it's kind of like what it is what you're saying as being a teammate. Yeah. You know, you always have to look for the best version of you so you can help your your team. Yeah. If you're good, you're going to help your team 
that that's for sure. You I know? Love that. And um some other people, not only players, uh they always when they are not playing or they are not having minutes, they make excuses. So the coaches doesn't like me, uh and all that stuff. But but it isn't that. Something is missing in you, that's why you don't get considered to play. You know? Mm. So you gotta be working hard every time. Sometimes happens that the coach doesn't like your style. It isn't that you're not good. It's, yeah. It's, your style doesn't fit with his style. Right. So, so, so maybe that's the problem. But you have to keep working hard every time. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's great. It's great. Let, let's learn a little bit about you. Uh, you know, just, just you. Uh, you're originally, you're, you're born here in, in Sacramento, you yeah, had mentioned. Yeah, Sacramento, yeah. And I was born in Sacramento, yeah. Yeah, what was your childhood like? Did you, how long were you here? I know you also lived in Mexico for a while. Actually, I've been living in Mexico for like all my life. Uh, uh, I was born here in Sacramento, but my, but my mom was deported, so I had to go back to Mexico. I was in arms, so I really don't remember that story, but, but my mom uh, uh, told me something about it. So we uh, went back to Mexico, and I started like my life in Mexico. Um, my dad uh, stayed here for, for working, so we had to come closer. So I started to live in Tijuana for like one or two years. And then uh, Chivas uh, came to me and they invited me to, to be part of the, of the team. So wow. I went back to Guadalajara and I started my professional career with, uh, with, with Chivas. Wow. So when you were in Tijuana, you were playing soccer, I mean, for Chivas to see you. Yeah, How I was that playing work? Like uh, you're college playing? and I'm theater, yeah. Oh, so you were playing, you were in school. Yeah, in I was Tijuana. in school. I got in it. In Tijuana and in and, and San Isidro. So, ah. so that's why like, I learned a little bit of English. So when I went back to, to Guadalajara, obviously, obviously I stopped studying here in the U.S. But I um, started to play uh, like more professional. I want to I wanna talk about that, how extremely committed to the sport and to yourself and education you are. What's that like to be in... Tijuana, where obviously living conditions are much different than over here. T Tijuana is just some hard living, but you're also playing soccer and going to San Isidro and going to school. Are you commuting back and forth uh, to Yeah, to I was school? going back and forth, yeah. And so. how long is that, like, uh, what's that commute? Like, is that like a lot? That seems like it's a lot of work where, you know, uh, yeah, it is. difficult uh, you is You have that? to wake up early. Yeah. You have to walk uh for the for the border, then I had to <laughs> get the trolley, and then I have to w walk a little more so so I can make it to to school. Yeah. And and in the afternoon when you're out uh, out of school, you have to make the same uh, the same the same way. So it's kind of hard, but you know it's part of life. Yeah. You know you you have to do what it takes. See, I think that's. That's something that a lot of us take for granted is the grind that happens. You know, when people talk about, uh, I mean, you're, you're an American citizen and born here, but living in, in Mexico. And when people talk about like, uh, like it's amazing the I advantages that some of us have where you look at someone like you who's working hard, getting up early, crossing the border, getting on a trolley, going over here all to pursue your dreams – while getting educated and you did that like that's a great example for for me and hopefully for people listening to the will and the dedication to yeah. being better at something and it takes a lot of work so to get to where you've been i mean you've been world cups and you won a gold medal for crying out loud that's incredible from a guy who's living in tijuana crossing borders going to school learning english because i'm assuming your first language was spanish growing up over yeah. even though you're born here yeah so that i mean kudos to you i'm i'm tipping my hat out of respect that's Thank it's you. amazing and and i love that by you doing that leads us to an example of what success is and how you can do it with hard work so you get picked up by chivas yeah. what was that like when you got the call or when you found out were you like that's a big deal yeah uh one or two years before, I had an invitation uh, from Atlas. My my parents didn't accept it because I was uh, younger. I was mm. twelve years old, and wow. and they said, um, "No, not 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 yet. You're not ready." So when the Chivas invitation came came in, uh, I was like, "Hey, 
this time, let me go. I'm a Chios fan. You're a Chios fan. So in Guadalajara, we, we got some parents over there. So so please let me go. And and they were like, okay, this time you can go and, and go go follow your dream. Wow. So yeah, they uh, fourteen years old. Fourteen years old. Amazing. Yeah, it was it was it was it was difficult, you know. I bet. Uh, you're too young. Your mom uh, gives you everything when you're at home, but when when you're outside, man, you have to look for you yourself. You have to do everything. You have to wash your clothes. You have to, man. You have to do everything. So so it was kind of hard, and you have to be like very mature in a very young age. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And work on the sport yeah. and the fitness. You have to and work, training. you have to study, you have to be disciplined. Wow. If you want to make it in, in, in anything in, in your life, you have to be disciplined. Yes. You gotta have discipline in your life. If not, you're not gonna make it. I'm learning that uh, very much. I've been on this. Uh, I talk about it all the time. Anybody who watches is like, okay, already. But I've been on like a weight loss journey and I'm yeah. starting to find success, yeah. success now. But it was the discipline. Yeah. It's the discipline. It's consistency and focus. And, you know, and I kept trying to, like, yeah. just do little diets. And finally, I've, like, locked in. But uh, you're right. Dis- discipline and consistency. Yeah. And I think people could Commitment. achieve anything. Yeah. You know? Uh, so, man, that's great. This is this is, this is is cool. It's a, it's a good – it's a great story you have. It's a lot of tools for us. So now you're, you're – okay, you're playing with Chivas. What was the most – Difficult. If you could think of a time, you're on your own now. You're playing like any obstacle that you came across that was really traumatic. That maybe was like actually a lot. I mean, when I first came to Chivas, um, actually I was I was alone. There was nobody in the club because they were in vacations. So I, I was like four or five days alone by myself wow. in the complex. And I don't know, I just hang on the phone and, and call my mom and, and say, hey, mom, I don't want to be here. I want to go back home. And I was crying. And she was like, why? This is what you wanted. So just wait for one or two days. They will be back. And, and, and then you're going to get some friends. And, and then you're going to forget about this. And I was like, okay, mama, I'm going to do what, what you're saying right now. And, yeah, that, that'll help. That's what happens uh, when when the guys came came back from vacation. I started like to go to school, to go to training, and uh, and I forget about missing like my family. You know, yeah, so that was one thing. But obviously, when you are in 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 the process, mm-hmm. some coaches are tough to you. You know, and and and, and that's kind of hard. Uh, I had a, a few coaches that were like really mean to me. And, and and that I was like, man, why? Why I have to go through this if I can be at home, uh, yeah. being with everybody, with my parents. Yeah, mom's uh, cooking. Mom's, mom's cooking, <laughs> yeah, everything. Yeah. Uh, not, I don't have to run. Uh, man, I don't have to get tired. So I, I don't have to be with these people that doesn't care about you. And, and, and man... I get into it. I, I I was committed with myself, and I was I don't care. I I just want to become something in life, and I think this is my moment, and I'm gonna keep working hard. So maybe they can change their minds. Yeah. So so time gave me gave me the reason. Wow. Yeah. Did you have any mentors? Anybody that was maybe a little older than you to help guide you when you were there? No. No. no it was just, all myself. Just on your own. Yeah. That's tough. Even though I, I didn't like speak to my parents, like, hey, dad, this is happening. No, never. Obviously, when, when we were like going, growing as a, as a player, like going up, uh, they, they have a psychologist and then you can go and, and speak with them. But, but, before that, mm-mm, nothing. Wow. Yeah. In that environment, I know nothing about it, but um, being so young and there's there's grown men also, right? Is there ever like uh, like um, mistrike violence or do people get in fights or is there yeah, a lot yeah. of that? Yeah, there's because there's a lot of guys and, yeah. and you there's a lot of personalities and obviously you 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 get to know all of them and and obviously there's 
players who likes to be in trouble yeah. and you have to go you have to go through it so so you can yeah. grow as well figure you out know? who you yeah. are too that's that's right so yeah a lot of personalities and 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 also the the welcome was uh all the 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 people that, that was living in the in the complex they uh they'll get uh i don't know like in a meeting and 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 they uh like kick you and and with with the belt oh, or with man. the hands or yeah. with the sandals that was the welcome for the, every every the player hazing. for every player that was their first time in the complex oh man yeah. so you have to get a beat down and that's yeah. uh oh yeah. man the old uh hazing uh initiation type of thing <laughs> yeah yeah that's rough uh now, how what's it like uh, financially? Like once once you're playing at those levels, does is it financially good or it depends? Yeah, because uh, I used to play for free here in the in the in the in school or yeah or, or in the teams like amateur, and there I was I was getting like I don't know 150 dollars a month. Okay, uh, that was something, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Food, free, free food. Yeah, uh, room and board. Room, yeah. Didn't pay rent, nothing. That's one hundred fifty dollars for me. Yeah. At that time, it was, it was, it was good. Just yeah, for, fourteen. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so. you're doing what you love. And yeah. What about equipment? They cover that stuff, or you have to cover? Uh, that? only my shoes and shin guards. They cover. No, me. Oh, and but, then the but uniform, like uniforms, they cover. everything. Yeah, they, they, they got give it. you everything. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Um. And then traveling, of course. Traveling, yeah. Obviously, yeah. They pay everything. What was that like, traveling for the first time when you got to, like, do you uh, remember your first game? International, you, it was, it was, it was like, more exciting because in Mexico, you used to go, like, from city to city. Yeah. But coming to the to the States, uh, playing an international tournament, it was, it was, it was amazing because you play against uh, international teams, like, Real Madrid, Manchester City, yeah, yeah, all you, all those youth clubs, and yeah. it was like like amazing. I was the in Mexico, you play against America, you guys uh, uh, Atlas. Uh, those are like the classicos in Mexico. So, so those games were good. The other ones, it was like, man, you go to play to a city, a very tough city, but they they don't have a a first division club. Yeah, yeah. So, so they they get teams just to 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 cover like the tournament. Do you remember the first time you got minutes? Like, minutes, yeah, it was it was it was hard, man. It was a big level. The, obviously, amateur and professional, it meant big difference. Yeah. So, very intense. So I was like, man, I can't breathe. I need air. <laughs> I was like tired. So yeah, this is, obviously it's the the you get nervous. Yeah. And 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 all the anxiety you have. Do you remember the actual game, like who you were playing or? Oh no. No. I'm a theater, no. Professional, yeah. My first team was against uh, uh, Cruz Azul in uh, Mexico City. Wow. Man, that was a. What was that like? <laughs> like your first. That was that was very different moment. Uh, first, uh, you get to know that you're playing for the for the first time in first division, so you get to know like one or two days before the game. Wow. So obviously when, when you get to know that, um, you start like thinking, uh, you get like a little nervous. This is my opportunity. What if I don't make it the way it is? Uh, can be my last, my first and last. But when you get to the stadium, you see a lot of people like screaming and and and, and, and you, you get to see like all the people, man. You, you get nervous. You can't, you cannot like see the people like man because it's your first time so you are impressed you yeah know? so when the game started you play against uh really good players they had in cruz azul so obviously you had to really do a good game if not man they're gonna make you trash <laughs> yeah, yeah so i had a really good game that day but i i finished it exhausted exhausted yeah. because obviously Obviously, the, the 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 game was intense, but more like I was more nervous and the anxiety. Yeah, like I was. That's why I, I I finished the game like very very exhausted. Wow. Yeah. How, how about now? What position do you play? I used to play left back defender. 
Left back. Oh, okay, so so left back. So so you're a defender. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you're you're not. So I was gonna say, do you remember your first goal? But you're not a striker. You're a defender. Yeah. So you're aggressive. Yeah, I was. You're not, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're not yeah. scared to to charge people. And yeah, that's why uh, I needed to have a good game, because I was a defender. If I make a mistake, we can lose the game. Yeah. You know. So it was kind of tough, but but it was a good it was a good game for me. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So tell me a little on the personal life. So you just had a baby? Yeah. Congrats. Now I'm living this new life. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a daddy right now. I have a newborn and I have a one-year-old. Uh, we were going fast. So, so yeah, I'm a little sleepless right now because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's tough carrying kids. It's tough, tough. Yeah. So you have two two kids? Two, yeah. Right two now. kids and yeah. a one-year and your it's, baby's yeah. one. She's 15 days. And the other one is one year. Oh, one, one year old and a f- and fifteen days. Yeah, fifteen days. Oh, you just had a baby. Mm-hmm. Oh man, congratulations! Yeah, thank you. I thank thought you much. were saying your baby's one years old, so I was still like, oh, it's new. Oh, so you have two. Yeah, yeah two. you were moving. Yeah. You didn't waste any time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Yeah, yeah that's, that's good true. though. They grow up together. Right? Yeah, they have. Yeah. They'll be able to. A the, boy and a girl, or yeah, the couple. Oh, yeah, her, the and the age. boy's older. Yeah, the boy's older. Oh, so she has a big brother now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. he's going to have his hands full, having to protect. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. and you're living here, and you're living in the States now. I'm, and, living and in, I'm living here in Ontario, yes. Fantastic. How how you loving that? It's good? It's yeah, I really like it. Um, like I told you, uh, I've never been he- living here in the, in the United States. Uh, I did now that uh, the uh, strikers invited me to play for them. Uh, a few months uh, earlier, uh, my my first guy, my first boy, was born here in San Diego. So uh-huh. I came here for like three months before he was born. Yeah. Then I went back to Mexico, and then uh, Strikers uh, invited me to play for the for the team. Fantastic. So so let's talk about the Strikers. So you come from playing traditional soccer. Now you're playing Strikers is indoor soccer. Uh, very fast pace, very aggressive. Uh, how do you feel with the transition from traditional soccer to? Yeah, it's it's uh, more different. Uh, not difficult, but you have to learn like the rules really, really quick. Yeah. So you can have like a, a better uh, understanding of the of the game. Obviously, it's uh, something different, more, more, more faster. Uh, you have to like be one or two minutes, and then you have to go. Uh, so you have to like uh, adapt like really quick. Yeah. Uh, my first season was 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 a little tough. Mm-hmm. So maybe this second season, I, I I hope I can do a lot better. Of course. Let me ask you: Is the training different? Training for this more rapid, quick pace? Like I mean, more in the tra- in your physical training? Like everything you train is everything is than- different. Okay, everything is different because. Like in the outdoor, if there's a a ball coming in the air, you you make a fake and the ball goes out. Yeah. Here, if you do that, uh, the ball comes go, off the wall. Comes off the wall, and <laughs> the forward can go and score a goal. So you have to like, you don't have to let the ball go away because it doesn't go out. Yeah. So you have to like, it, it's different. The bouncing, yeah. Uh, the movement is like a like the moves are like in basketball yeah. and the goal's smaller right it's smaller the goal post yeah. i know in traditional is bigger yeah if you get the ball like really close to the wall man you have to i don't know you, you don't you don't know how to take that ball out because yeah. you have players this side you have on the other side in the back <laughs> there's yeah it's like hockey so yeah it's, yeah it's, it's, it's yeah it seems like so when you guys are doing drills and practicing in your in your team practices or training camp. I'd love to come out, by the way, sometime and, and check it out. And how are you feeling that indoor soccer is making a dent? You think crowds, I know it's 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 new, so it's building. Are you feeling that fans are really engaging with it? Or Yeah, people like it because it, it is uh, interesting all the time. Yeah. Like if you play 15 minutes, 15 minutes, it's very like interesting because it's really quick and yeah. there, there's many goals. Because, yeah. you know, it's really short. And, and, and it's really interesting. People like it. People like it. So, we yeah, traditional it, soccer, you wait sometimes. Yeah, yeah and nothing happens, minutes. you know. And you uh, get but when it happens, yeah. it's like yeah. the shot. But here, if, but you make here. A, if you make a shot, it sounds in the wall like, and the rebounds, there's 
somebody else come come and get the ball. So it's it's really different. People a lot like, of action. Yeah, people. Yeah, a lot of action. A lot of that, action. That's the word. A lot of action, and people like it. People like it because uh, I, I I I've been like talking to all these fans, and they said, okay, we know the sport because of you guys. You know, now that you guys are here, yeah. So we know like the strikers play here in Ontario and everything. So, but now that we came to see you, to watch you guys play, we like it. We like what we see. This is probably a, a, a silly question, but it's still, I, I, I want to ask, how does it feel when you're playing, um, like, because USA Mexico is a major competitive, even in the traditional soccer, right? These are like in the M MLS, I think it is. MLS. It's like a big, big deal. I know mm -hmm. people. So um, how does that feel to know that, you know, so many people will have eyes on this? And uh, does it, you know, what's 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 the feeling of the team? Is everybody feeling good? Yeah, actually, it's the best thing because that's what you want. The, the people uh watch you play so you know during these games people have all their eyes in the game so obviously you need to give your best first because you want to win the game yeah and second because you want to like make happy all the people that is watching us you know so yeah. that's why it's very important to have a good uh preparation before the game all right. Well, Miguel, this has been an honor. Uh, I can't wait to come see the game. Uh, definitely going to be following you and yeah. what you're doing in your career. And uh, congratulations with the family and Thank the new you. life here. Yeah. And uh, I'm excited for you. I'm excited to meet you. Um, one thing I like to do when I'm closing out the episodes, I like to ask the guests to look into this camera here. And for anybody who's watched this episode that could relate with you, maybe a 12-year-old, 14-year-old young man like you were that wants to, has dreams. Um, but for anybody, but I, specifically, I want you to think about that 12, 14-year-old boy, maybe in Mexico, that wants to follow in the path, that dreams to play for Chivas. What advice do you have for them to... Yeah, like, like I said, if you want to make... Uh your dream come true you have to you got to have commitment and discipline those two words are very important for you to make or to do whatever you want if you have discipline if you have commitment you're gonna make it because that is very important without discipline i'm sorry but it's gonna be hard it's gonna be tougher for you to make it but trust me discipline is the word you need to have in your life, in your life. Not just because you like soccer or you like sports, in your life. Whatever you do, you got to have discipline. That's it. I love it, man. And Miguel, thank you so no, much for coming you, on. This has been great. Thank you I'm for the I'm going to close us out here. I really hope you took some uh, gems out of this interview. I definitely did. I didn't know what to expect coming into this interview with Miguel. We just met today. And uh, right from the get-go, things were hitting me. He was dropping all kinds of gems. One of the most important things I took out of this was have dedication, discipline, consistency, but discipline. He nailed it. You got to work hard and you got to be disciplined in anything you're doing. And if you do that, you will be successful. Another huge component of this interview that I took a major, major gem from was when he talked about in the World Cup, he didn't get minutes. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know. I didn't expect him to say that. And when he said that, it hit me so powerful because it made me think of, uh, of, a, mo of a movie named Rudy. Check it out because it's very similar about a player who dreams to play. His whole dream is to play and he makes the team and all the work he goes through. You know, hearing uh, Miguel talk about not getting those minutes, but still being there for his team, being supportive, being prepared to play, hoping to play, but knowing he might not get that opportunity. But the fact is he was ready, he was prepared, and he was supportive of his team. That is huge to me. I needed to hear that in my life. We're not always where we think we should be. We're not always there. And sometimes it's because we're not prepared and we're not right for it. But he didn't say it. He said, sometimes you're right for something. You're prepared, but maybe the coach doesn't think you fit in what they've put together. Well, in the orchestration of life, I take that as 
God has a plan for me and for all of us. And we'll get to play the positions when it's our time. And to love and be ready in the time we're in. I don't know. That's what I took out of that. I hope other people took some out of it. I really enjoyed today's interview. And uh, see you next time. FYI Podcast. You should never stress about the problems you be facing. Everybody in the mud on the struggle trying to make it. Look into the mirror and you see your motivation. Then you step into the world and you find your inspiration. I'm finding inspiration, and once I get a hold of it, I'll never get complacent. Look into the mirror and you see the motivation, then you step into the world and you find your inspiration. <laughs>